Hello, my name is Todd Schrader. I'm the High School Activities Director and I'm here with Jason Engel. J Jason is going to um, cover our middle school athletics this year for us, um, 7th and 8th grade, and we're excited about him helping, stepping in and helping with that. So um, Jason and I both are going to share some information this morning um, concerning our handbook and some general information um, for our activities and athletics. First off, um, Booster Club, we want to give a shout out to them for all they do for us. Um, they work tirelessly um, all year, um, concession stands and other events to help our student athletes. And they raise um, thousands and thousands of dollars a year um, that come back to our students um, that help enhance our program. So we want to give a uh, shout out to um, Jennifer Carr and, and all the Booster Club board members for all they do. And if you need to, uh, uh, would like to help um, with any activities with the Booster Club, especially with concession stands, because they always need workers for that, please reach out to Jennifer. Um, you can sign up for uh, concessions throughout the year for fall, winter, and spring on that. But just contact Jennifer Carr and um, she will get you hooked up for that. And thanks again to all um, the members of the Booster Club board for all they do for our, for our kiddos. And so next one we want to talk about district release dates and so Misha uh, waits about two weeks into each season uh, and then they release all the, the district uh, opponents and all that. So that is done because throughout Missouri different schools, uh, different sizes, they might be able to field a team in a certain sport one, one school year but not the next and so um, in two weeks into the practice um, the practice date, you know, the start of practice is when the district opponents and all that will be be, be released per sport. Uh, next one is our practice start dates. Those will be on the district website for all uh, fall, winter, and spring. Uh, our practice dates for middle school and high school. Uh, we'll get those posted on the school website. Okay, so for dead weeks, uh, next summer we'll also have those posted on the school website. And we have both an activity webs or activity dead week and we have an act, uh, athletic dead week. And so just be aware uh, as you're scheduling your vacations next summer uh, to be checking the school website and our coaches will also get some of that stuff out too. This year, um, again, we have Tony Harris. He'll be our trainer. Um, Tony does an amazing job for our student athletes. This is uh, um, a service that we can provide for our athletes um, after school and also during some of our contests. Tony usually comes to school here at the high school about 2.45 daily, and then he's here till 6 a little after each day, um, unless he's covering soccer games or um, football. He is with football um, on Friday nights, on Monday nights. Um, but if you need any um, assistance with, with uh, Tony, you can, Tony can be reached here. Tony does have a school um, email address, so you can just email Tony. Um, Tony I think it's T. Harris of AlderSchools.org if you need to reach him for something during the day. But, I'll, but Tony is here, um, of course, after school daily from 2.45 to 6. Also, Tony has a healthy roster um, communication tool that he is using with parents. You guys need to sign up if you have not um, signed up your um, son or daughter for that. So that way he can communicate with you, um, especially when he's having to treat your son or daughter for injuries. It's a great, great tool. Um, that he implemented last year, so try to do that if you have not done that. Next, we have talk about transfers. Each year, of course, we have kids moving in and out. Um, Mission will not allow students to compete um, once they move in until the transfer process has been concluded. Um, so if you are a new student, please get that information to Jason or myself, and we will get those transfers started. There's different transfers. It just depends on the situation and we'll um, go through that when we get that information and, and see what avenue we need to go down for that. So once you get in, if you are a new student, please get your names to us so we can start that. Because usually once we start that, we get su submitted online. It takes two to seven days to get those finished. And um, students can compete, um, practice um, while we're waiting on that um, decision, but they cannot compete until Misha has approved that student to, uh, to be approved. Next, we want to talk about important forms. We have a practice pass. This is a very important um, document that kids have to have before they can practice 
Um, it doesn't matter if it's fall, winter, or spring. We implemented that a few years ago, and it's a great um, um, tool that we use for our coaches to make sure that we have everything in for these students. Um, what they have to have on these um, passes, of course, is the physical uh, form, and then we'll talk about the other forms. Now, on your physical form this year, Mission has a new policy. It is um, two years from the date of that physical. Um, that's all you need to remember, basically, is, is, is uh, two years from the date. So basically, athletes can come in and get a physical as a seventh grader, a ninth grader, and an eleventh grade, and then they have, um, of course, their physicals will cover for their, their course of their career. If they already currently have a physical, we'll look up the date, and it's two years from the date of that physical. Also, Mish is putting on their website because um, we have to put every kid that participates with our activities on the website, they will put a, uh, they have a system that they're going to help us track those physicals. So we'll put the date of the physical, and then they'll give us um, red flags when, when uh, physicals are coming due. So it's kind of a way for them, that they're going to help us monitor and notify us when those physicals will be coming due for those student athletes. So it's a neat system. It's a two-year deal, and I think it's going to be very um, beneficial for everybody. Proof of insurance, everybody has to have that. That is an annual deal. It, it's not a two years. Proof of insurance is still annual. You have to have that. We have a form. Here's the form for that. Um, you still need to sign that, complete that. Um, if you do not have um, insurance, you can buy insurance through it's an online enrollment. It's KK and, uh, Company. And we have those forms here, which you can get online and get the, the uh, insurance for, uh, for your athletes. You have to have insurance. That's MSHA driven. It's not a, a local policy. It's a state policy. You have to have insurance before they can compete. Handbook form is the same. Our athletic handbook's online. Um, we're also going to have some hard copies here for, for the parents and kids if they need them. But the handbook, you have to sign that form, turn that in. That's an annual form. Activity fee, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But you have to have that paid. And we'll talk about the, the pricing here in a little bit. And then the drug testing form. Um, it's in the back of the handbook. You have to turn that in. The drug testing form um, is a one-time sign form only for students. So uh, middle school, we're going to handle it this way. Middle school, if you sign it as a seventh grader, it's good for eighth grade as well. But when you come in as a high school student, we'll have you sign one as a freshman, and then that will cover you, of course, through your high school career. So high school students, you'll have to turn it in one time. Once we get that drug consent form, um, we'll have that on file, and that will be for your career here at BHS. So for practice passes at the middle school, um, we can turn these in at any time that you're up at the middle school this summer or uh, prior to practice starting at the middle school. We usually start a little bit later than the high school does. So get these turned into to the middle, get your information turned into the middle school office and then our secretary will get this practice pass to your student athlete right before practice starts that first day. That way they have it and they can take it to their coaches. Okay, a few things we need to talk about real quick. Um, alcohol drug policy. Uh, we implemented this a few years ago. Um, if a student violates that policy, the first offense is 28 days. Um, if you self-report, that is reduced to half, which is 14. Um, there's also, um, say, with the 28 days, there's four hours of intervention um, counseling and then with uh, the 14 days, that's cut in half as well, so it goes to two hours of intervention counseling. The intervention counseling uh, by the student is set up by the parents. It's also um, the cost for that is absorbed by the parents for that. Those have to be done before the student can be reinstated. So those two hours, if it's 14 days or four hours, 28 days, um, before they can come back and compete. Kids, once they violate the policy, they can always practice. Um, they just, while they're sitting their suspension, they're serving the suspension, they just cannot compete until that has been met. Also, there's going to be a mandatory drug test within the 30 days um, when they come back. Once we get those schedules from our drug testing company, then those that, the student athletes that violate that will be also um, drug tested as well. Second offense is 60 days. Um, there's no um, deduction for self-reporting with eight hours of intervention and counseling there, and then third offense, um, you're out on that. Okay, we need to cover tobacco, vaping devices, and e-cigs policy. This year we have changed the policy, and this is 7 through 12 um, policy for, 
for these three areas. But the first violation for vaping of tobacco or e-cigs this year is going to be a seven calendar day suspension. In the past, it, it's, it's been a little bit uh, less than that, but we are going to change that. So this year will be seven days. And then fraction, if you're in season, um, it will, of course, happen from the time of the infraction. If it's out of season, then the penalty will be implemented the first week of competition for that next board. So it's not the first practice of that next board, it's the first week of competition for that. Second offense for these violations will be 14 calendar days. Um, and that will also be in season or out of season. And those, if it's in season, it'd be from the day of the infractions, of course, just like the first offense. And then um, the four out of season will be the first week of competition as well. Third offense for this violation for the school year will be you're out of um, athletics or um, activities for the remainder of the school year. And then this will start back over then the next school year. So it's not like our alcohol drug policy with three strikes you're out for the career. For this one, it's just annually. So if you mess up three times, then you'll start back over the next year. Also, if there's an illegal substance found in any of these um, devices when violation happens, then we'll turn that over to our school um, handbook and policy and then that will be um, handled through our resource officer as well as our upper administration. So just wanted to give you um, some information on the new policy for tobacco vaping and e states and if you have any questions again on this please give me a call and we will help you with that. Academic wise at the middle school uh, we have grade checks every three weeks during the the sport seasons. Um, so if you have an F um, at, the, at the three week grade check, you will have a one week probation period to get that grade up in that class. And if you have at the end of that one week probation period or any time during that, when we do those, those uh, secondary grade checks, then you're good to go and, you, and we can participate uh, just great. Um, you can practice during that, during, um, you know, that time. Um, uh, don't get that, that F up, but you're unable to participate. At the high school, um, they have grade checks every four and a half, nine weeks, 13 and a half weeks, and then uh, 18 weeks. And at that, they have a two week probation period because they have block scheduling, and so they have class every other day. Uh, also at the high school, if you have one F at the end of the first semester, um, you'll be sitting out the one week in January uh, when you come back. And if you have two Fs at the end of either semester, then according to Misha, you're ineligible for the following uh, full semester. And the next topic is citizenship. And so really in that, we, we just want there to be open communication between um, student athletes, parents, and coaches, and, and us. And so if something were to happen outside of school, um, with a, stu a student athlete and it involved law enforcement, um, the best way to handle that would be for the student or the parent to come uh, approach the, the coach of that, of that student athlete or even us, uh, whether it's in season or out of season, and come approach us, you know, fill us in, and then we can go from there. Okay, activity fees. Um they are going to be the same this year. Uh, middle school will be um, 30, um, 15, and 0. So 30 is the full activity fee. 15 is if you qualify for reduced lunches. And then if you, have, if you are on the re, uh, free lunches, you don't have to pay an activity fee. And if you don't know if you qualify for uh, free or reduced lunches, you can contact um, Tiffany Hunt at the middle school and Gene Stiles here at the high school. And we have that information, and we can share that with you. Um, to, to provide that. Then the high school activity fee is $50, um, $25 for reduced, and then zero, of course, for free. Um, this is a one-time fee. It doesn't matter if you play one sport or three or four sports. It's, it's one-time fee. But also to help offset that a little bit is we give the students a student pass. Um, they get that from us, of course, when they turn in their activity, um, the forms for the activity pass. And then they use that to get into games. And we recommend both middle school and high school that you, once you students get that pass, have them take a picture of that on their phone. That way they'll have it so it doesn't get lost, misplaced, and so on. So um, that student pass will get them into 
to games. So, and the thing that's nice about that, like middle school students, they can use it to come to high school games and vice versa. So it's, it's a neat, neat thing we can, we can offer back. Also with uh, in school and out of school suspension, uh, how that relates to our student athletes and participating in athletics. Um, in in school suspension, you're still uh, able to practice uh, during that in school suspension time, but unable to participate in any competitions. Uh, but with an out of school suspension, uh, you're unable to uh, practice or participate in competitions. Signing out students. Um, we do allow parents to take, um, of course, your son or daughter um, after ball games. Your coaches will go over that information when they have their coaches' meetings on, on how they handle that. Some coaches um, like to have the varsity players stay for so many innings or so many. Um, quarters of certain games and, and so that's kind of we leave that up to the coaches but they will go over that with you but as far as us to um, help and um, manage that if students want to ride home with other students or excuse me with other parents uh, we do allow that but we need to have a note that is either emailed to us or brought to us that we can sign and of course we make a copy put give it to the student to take to their coach and then also we follow that so we do allow that. We do not allow students to take other students home, but we do allow parents to um, inform us that other parents can take their son or daughter home after ball games. A couple of other things here to end this thing. Um, we want to talk about the ABC's concussion. There will be a handout on the website that parents need to view. This is a MISHA mandated um, information that you guys need to look at. It's, uh, it's called the ABCs of Concussions. Parents have to look at that. Um, so please review that. It won't take you very long. It's just um, some neat information about um, con concussion and concussion protocol on that. Um, last thing before we end this too is uh, this is a parent communication um, flyer that uh, will be on the website as well. This is some very um, good information on how you can communicate with coaches um, as far as what coaches will talk to you about and what they won't talk to you about. Um, it's just um, a great tool that we use to, uh, to share with parents on communicating. Uh, to wrap this up, um, anytime you need to reach us, of course, Jason is at the middle school, of course, I'm here at the high school, but please email us if you have any questions, any concerns. Um, of course, we're at ball games a lot every night, so if you need to, you know, stop us and give us a shout there if you have any questions, any concerns.